Hello, and welcome to Autodesk Revit 2016 Favorite New Features Part 2. My name is Carl Storms. I'm a senior applications expert at Imaginet Technologies. This video continues on from our last video, Revit 2016 Favorite New Features by Nick Boley. Here's what we're going to cover in this version. Autodesk Revit 2016 Core Features. These are the features that are available in Revit, Structural, and MEP. Then we're going to move on to some architectural specific features. Okay, let's get started with our first feature. Allow navigation during redraw. What this feature allows you to do is to navigate around the drawing while the model is in the process of actually redrawing. Now this is a feature that's available in the options menu under graphics and you'll see right here we have allow navigation during redraw. This feature is enabled by default. And basically what it allows you to do is as you're navigating through the drawing, you can still be moving and navigating around before the drawing is completely redrawn. Now, this is just a small model, so the effects of it are not visible. However, if you're working in a large project uh, that has many files linked in, you may notice that this feature will save you some time. Uh, the caveat being is that the place that you're trying to get to is some place that's already been rendered in the regeneration process. The next thing we're going to look at is remembered view states. So basically what this feature does is remembers how you were inside the drawing or the view when you close Revit. So say for example I'm working in floor level one, I zoom in here and I'm doing some work on the reception area. I have time to go home for the day, I save, close, and then I reopen the drawing. As I reopen the drawing, it opens it in the exact same location within which I saved it. In previous versions of Revit, when you reopened, you would get the zoom all view. I can see that some people see this feature as being valuable, and I can see other people thinking maybe not so much. Um, it may become annoying if you're working with other people and somebody's zoomed into a reception, but you are actually working on stair two, so you have to do some navigation, as opposed to before when it was the zoom all, you could just zoom into where you want to go. So the jury's still out on whether this is going to be a great new feature or a feature that's good for some and not necessarily others. Now we're going to look at Rotate Project North. And what this feature does, as the name implies, is it allows you to rotate Project North. This particular feature is only available in plan view and is beneficial as it allows you to rotate Project North while rotating your detail and annotation items as well. So in this little sample project you can see that I have lots of detail items as well as a revision cloud. I've got a room tag, uh, some window door tag, some dimensions, some symbols, a little bit of everything that you can imagine would be inside a drawing. So I navigate to the Manage tab, underneath Position, Rotate Project North, and I have the choice of 90 degrees clockwise, 90 degrees counterclockwise, 180 degrees, or a line selected line or plane. So let's start with 90 degrees clockwise. I select this. It does the rotation. It gives me an error message. It's not really an error. In this case, it's telling me that everything was successfully processed. You will see everything is still readable. Everything's been adjusted. Now if I undo that, let's try it again with a rotate project north. And this time, I'm going to select my model line. As you can see, same warning. Everything's been rotated. Our tags are rotated. Now again, we know tags are always horizontal or vertical, but it gives a neat look if we're on a 45 degree. Uh, so all of that information. And then once more, we'll just look with our 30 degree model line. And again, it rotates. So it's a quick and easy way to rotate Project North while having all of our annotation rotate with it. Now the last feature that would be our core feature is one that wasn't even mentioned uh, with the new release of Autodesk Revit 2016, uh, but have been found by a few keen users on the World Wide Web, so I thought I would show you that as well. And what it is, is a new parameter that allows you to do multi-line text. And basically what this means 
is that if you were to create a new parameter, so in this case let's say I select the door, I'm going to edit the family, and I'm going to add a new parameter. Now it's best that this is a shared parameter because then we have the ability to schedule as well as tag this information. So add parameter, shared parameter, select. I've got two in here. I've got MLT multi-line text, which is my type-based version. And then I've got MLT instance, which is my instance-based version. So let's select that one, make it instance, going to group it under text, say OK. I have it here. And this is where we see what multi-line text really does. I can't input information, but I get my three little dots. I select that and I can put in multiple lines of text. Line one, line two, line three, line four, etc. So you see how we can do that. So I say OK, and we continue on. Now I already have one inside my project, so I'm just going to close out of this one. And I'm going to navigate to this door. I select it. We see underneath text we've got my MLT instance, and it just says door make with some dots. If you hover over it, you get like a tool tip that comes up that tells you the full extents of the text in all five lines in this case. If I were to select this door, I have a little more information. Again, hover over it, and it gives me all the information that's inside the door. This is also schedule a bowl. So if I go to my schedules, select my door multi-line text schedule, and you'll see I've got my floor, my door number, and my information. Once again, it only shows the first line of the text in this view. However, if we go to the schedule on a sheet, and let me see here, schedules, we can see that it does show all the lines of information that we have inside our view. Standard word wrap uh, applies, so if I move this over a little bit, you'll see that it bumps down to the next level. So it is controlled by the word wrap that's associated with either the tag that you're working with or the family. Speaking of tags, as I mentioned, we can also tag this information should you need to. So I'm going to quickly add a tag. And as you can see, again it's bigger than my border but it fills in all the information that I need and I have it there. So that is the new multi-line text parameters that Autodesk didn't even tell us was there. It's a nice little Easter egg or treat for us. So now let's move on to the architectural specific features. The first one that I'm going to look at is place rooms automatically. And as you can imagine, what this feature does is automatically put in some rooms. So I select room. I now have the place rooms automatically tab, set up all of my information, select that, boom, 30 rooms were created. Now, like all automated features, um, just like tag all not tagged, this can have benefits and it can have drawbacks. Likely there's going to be some cleanup. It's probably not going to be perfect every time. You may have to delete some rooms. Say, for example, we got a bunch of stuff going on in here and it's not very clear. So you have to ask yourself, uh, is it going to be longer to do things manually or to do it automatically and then go back in and do some cleanup? One of the other new features for architecture is floor elevations. So basically what this means is now when we input a floor, we now have a parameter uh, that allows us to see information about the floors. So say for example I turn on, I'm going to go to my third floor, I'm going to turn on this, I select my floor, and we see under dimensions we now have elevation at top and elevation at bottom. So information uh, that we can see about where the top and where the bottom of that floor is. Now there's a very similar feature uh, that's available inside of the structural version that also gives us elevation at top, elevation at bottom, as well as uh, elevation top of core, elevation bottom of core. And both of these are schedulable. So this is a structural floor that I've put in here just to see the information. I've added some extra stuff to it so I've got some stuff above and below my core. I scroll down, you'll see we've got elevation at top, elevation at bottom, overall thickness. Now if I go down to my floor schedule, I filtered out just floor 3, and you can see floor 3, this is just my architectural floor here, and so it just gives me elevation at bottom and elevation at top. 
But then if I have my uh, structural floor, you can see it also gives me elevation at bottom, bottom of core, elevation at top, top of core. So you can see how there can be some very useful information available to you through that new feature. The last new feature that I'm going to look at for Autodesk Revit 2016 architectural specific is another one that was a hidden gem that wasn't mentioned when Autodesk put out the what's new features for Revit and this is the new con the new door content. So if you're working with uh, the US Imperial, US metric or the Canadian uh, content packs you'll see that you get a lot more bang for your buck when it comes to doors now. So if I were to insert and navigate to my door family, this is a metric project, so let's go to the metric, select doors, you'll see that I have more than just the doors like previous versions. I also have a residential area where I have residential doors. I have a hardware folder which has hardwares that goes on the door. This is true 3D hardware. And then I have commercial doors for commercial applications. As you can see, I've got a little bit of everything in here and I can go to my sections so we have our doors. If you are in a fine detail and applicable it shows handles. Commercial again. These are the new doors. You'll see we've got a little more detail in them. Uh, residential once again we've got all of our hardware that's in there only if it's at a fine level. If I change it to something else the hardware goes away. And one of the nicest things that they've done is all the content, including the old content we're just seeing that they've updated for 2016, we now have the ability to have the swing be whatever we want. So I select this door, I can make the swing 136, apply, changes. Select this door, 15 degrees, apply, changes. This also works for our pocket doors, panel open, panel close, as well as our doors that are multiple action. It does both sets of doors, or panels I should say, 69, 96. There we go. So that is a pretty awesome feature. It also works with elevation. So if I were to go to my residential elevation, zoom in here, you'll see that we've got some panels in here, or over here we've got some grill work. I select the door. I have the ability to turn off the grills. So whether I want the grills or not. Again, just handy little things that save you recreating new features. The last thing we'll look at is the hardware. And you'll see I showed you that folder that had the hardware in it. We have the ability for the hardware. But you'll also see some of the downside. The hardware is an actual 3D entity. When you insert it, it comes in at the level that you're on. And it does not associate itself to the door. So if I were to go to 3D and I zoom in here, you'll see we've got our door hinge and our hardware. Now you can adjust the width so it, it sticks to the door but it doesn't actually align itself with the door. So if I were to go in and change this to say 900 then it's a little more at the proper height which is what these ones are at 900. I'm just going to put that out of the way. So because the doors are always closed to have it line up on your plan you see the door has to be closed. However if I select the door and I change the swing, the hardware doesn't go with it because this is just a symbolic swing. This is aligned with the actual door of the thing. So there are some shortcomings with the hardware. Um, it works really nice in the doors that it's included with when you put on the fine level of detail or not. Um, but you can see how it could be, could be useful. Overall, I think that the additional door content is a huge addition to Revit. Uh, the fact that we can change the doors makes it something that people have been wanting since Revit came out. Uh, it's a nice addition and it was a silent addition um, which I think makes it even better. And with that I'm going to end this video. Thanks a lot.